Yo, what is up, everyone? Like, sorry, I don't have like a big intro like Steve does with his power hour. So, apologize for that. I'm not too prepared. Let's hope Steve's doing good, whatever it is he's doing. It's been uh, not best of days uh, for a. Uh, The Iron Condor, but uh, nah, nah, Steve, Steve isn't going to share stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so okay, so let me give you a little bit of a rundown. Well, first, let me check and see where I'm at here. So, how I set things up, and I've done this ever since I've led the live stream um, for Mighty 90 and Runners, is I always have uh, multiple screens on it on my kid this or i guess charts so that i can look at price action um and so i always want that up that's like and for you guys like learning what i'm doing now because again don't ask me any questions about steve's power hour stuff because i'll probably lead, lead you in the wrong direction but um i just think it's important you always have price action pulled up so here i you know i have the dow the s p the nasdaq i like having i don't know why i do this but i like having futures along with you know uh besides sps XPS, SPX futures. I like having uh, the uh, regular, you know, so I got the futures on the top and regular on the bottom. And then I got the VIX and the Dow. So I can kind of see how they're all moving at once. So that's what I do with that screen. Um, Cause I have multiple screens. So, I'm sitting right now. I showed you in the Discord how I'm sitting pretty good still with that. It was a late lunch, Iron Condor number two. So, um, you know, my, you'll see this in my course, but my AM Iron Condors are, again, I'm central time about 9 to 11.30. And then lunchtime is about 11.30 to 1.30. And then about 1.30 to close or I usually don't take a trade after 245 central, but um, the block of time is just typically a little bigger than what Steve does with his bots and all you guys do that. So um, that'll all be part of my course. And so, so S and P is just kind of hanging out right here. So nothing for me to do until it either keeps pushing up and it tests you know, this iron condor that I currently have on. I also shared in the discord how I don't overlap strikes and you got to kind of got a visual of that too. So. And I'm currently green 40 bucks on the day. It's amazing. After that morning. <laughs> Yeah. So a couple things there, Ken. I got that. Uh, you remember how I wasn't getting, remember how I wasn't getting filled last week? So it was like, I wasn't getting my fills. It was going past my fill, you know? So it's like, that was just like the exact opposite there. So I don't know, but. No, can't have, can't have uh, control of my screen there. Somebody. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so my trades through the day so far, let me go to, um, and again, so I, I keep, reason I do it this way is because I do like to type notes in, it's a little more drill down data for me, um, I know Steve doesn't use spreadsheets anymore, but um, so I put one on at 9.35. And to be honest with you, like it was a cluster this morning. I was trying to lead the live stream, trying to get clips from my PowerPoint, trying to do zero DT. It was too much. I can't do that tomorrow. So I'm going to end my live stream tomorrow by 9.15 Central so that I could then 
because I can't get a course out to you unless I can get some real life examples. I can't do that while I'm trying to monitor my volume runners, continuation runners, mighty nineties. This is too much. Um, so anyway, uh, that was the slippage one, close the longs, small loss. And then, um, when it came off centered, I just put on another one. Um, that, why is that time not showing there? So that would have been 10. This would have been about 45 minutes later. There you go. Um, is that right? 10. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I ended up getting filled a half on that. And um, I put on a third one shortly after. And I think this is the one that I shouldn't have done. I should have just waited until this one played out. And then it got stopped out pretty good. Um, it moved out of center. I put on another centered one. And then it, I think it tanked. And when it tanked, it actually filled me on half of this one. So... Let me see here. See where I'm at now. So power hour moves quick. So I'll do my best to answer all your questions. It's easier for me to talk and answer them. Okay. So it's probably easier. Let me go back to price. So you see price is still coming up a little bit. So on a, I want to look at my one I currently have on, and it's easier for me to just do it this way for you. I have three screens, but so, so you see where this one's at? This is my lunchtime number two. So it's getting tested over here. So now as power hour rolls around, now would be about time to be looking for a power hour number one. See that? Okay. So let's take a look. And I'm going to do 4760s. And 4755s. And this is where I tighten it up a little bit. I might go 30 wide wings. So that'd be the 40, 4760s, 4790s. And then at 4755 and 46. 725, I believe. Okay, that gets me at 635 of premium. So I'm going to try to get filled on that one. It's off the screen. Okay. So really towards the end of the day, it's really all about where price is with your, with my one I currently have on more so maybe than consolidation of price. That makes sense. So I haven't gotten filled on that yet. They filled at 635. So I go in and I want to log that. And this again, this is these are works that are just me. And you figure out what works for you. But it's my power hour number one. And I got uh filled at uh 150 p.m. at uh 635 so that I can keep track. Profit targets are the same, no different. 20, 40, 60. Let's see. Okay. And let's see. So I immediately go in. So I got that power hour on. So I'm going to go in. And put in my OCO. Okay. 
Okay, so my OCO for power hour, this is what's different about, I guess maybe this is what you're talking about, um, Krish. So my profit targets are the same, but what is different is my stops, okay? So I just start out with a stop of plus four trailing stop. And Steve talks about that in the course. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, I'm just, let me get this in here and I'll, I'll be able to tell you what I'm doing here. So if I'm filled at 635, so 20%, I'm going to set at 510 for my first exit. I'm going to close half at 510. If you have questions on an OCO, that's all in the course. And so I'm kind of expecting you to kind of know those things first. Okay, so then I'm just going to put in, so 510 is my 20% profit target. I'm starting with a 4.0 plus four trailing stop. Okay. So I've got one power hour trade on and I've got one lunchtime left. And, you know, it could get stopped out of here anytime, who knows. Actually, it's my lunchtime number two that is still on. So you can kind of see prices moving up. That lunchtime, okay, so if you take a look at my price. So here's where, let's see, this was, I believe, lunchtime number one. And then when price moved down, I entered lunchtime two here. Okay, got stopped out of, got filled on 20% pro profit and then stopped out, I think. Let me go back and look. See, that's why I had to create a spreadsheet because it kept track. So my lunchtime one, yeah, it got out of uh, uh, 20, then 40, then got stopped. So my lunchtime two, I haven't gotten out of anything yet. So I'm still looking for a 20% profit on that. Opt for what, what sharing what? Yeah, you should be able to see, you should be able to see my screen. Can you see the price target, price movement? You can't see it? All right, get your, get your technicalities fixed out, Op4. So it would have been nice if my lunchtime two didn't get um, – I'm sorry, my lunchtime one didn't get stopped because it would be pushing back up and probably hitting profit target 60%, but you know, it, got, it got stopped. And that happens sometimes when you reduce your stops, like – how I do it is I reduce my stops as the more I get filled. And so again, you know, when you're looking at premiums, I'm looking for like typically power hour, three bucks or higher. Like most of you guys already know this, um, but I don't overlap strikes, right? So again, this is easier for me just to show you this. Oh, wait, that's not what I want to show you. Show you this. Okay, so my like at the money. So these are my two positions that I have on. Okay, so you can kind of see, like I know Steve will like, based on the back tests and all that, he doesn't mind overlapping strikes. But I just don't, 
like I could probably put in another one with a straddle and overlap it. I just don't. Let's, So I'm looking for price now during power hour to just kind of bounce around here. So if I get stopped out of one, then I, I'll look at entering another because price has obviously moved. Now, so most of the time I'm not doing three power hour trades unless one gets stopped out. So this would be trade number. So I've I've entered six trades. This would be my sixth. I have six trades so far. And that's typically what I do. I may end up getting seven in today because of this three in the morning, which I think I was just still a little flustered from trying to do too much at once. And I probably should have just held off and not even entered that one. So it's just, yeah, you know, is what it is. So on my lunchtime number two, I got in at 640 on that one, and I have a order in at 510 and a trailing stop of 480 for that because it was a lunchtime one. So I was still doing the 75% target on the trailing stop. And it's up to 690 now. So it's going the wrong direction. And so I've said this before, but I feel like I repeat myself a lot. And that's fine because to learn things, sometimes you got to do repeat yourself. Um, but I do tighten my wings up closer I get to the end of the day in case there is that big move that happens. So here's, here's um, lunchtime number two. You can see how it's tested up here. So I would have, you know, might have been better just to wait a little bit longer and then put it on. But my power hour number one should hopefully still be somewhat. What I don't want to have happen is I don't want two to be tested at the same time. But that can happen. And so... You can kind of see this, where this lunchtime number two is on. Um, it, there were 30. I posted that in my fill. So, okay, so here's my power hour number one. So it's sit, sitting over here a little further than I want it to be because I still have that lunchtime number two on. So if lunchtime number two gets stopped out, that would push this over to the tested side. So I probably would, that's where I would enter my power hour number two. Yeah, but these wings were 30. Wooga, these were 30, 30 wide. It's up there. I posted my, did I not post a fill? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. And when you're talking and showing and, Oh yeah, I, I must have just forgot to. I think I think I just said what I was using. That's what I did. I didn't post it. I just said it, and then I um, and then I uh, said thirty wide wings. I, I called out the, the short strikes, and then I said thirty wide wings. That's what I did. I never got around to posting it.
Okay, so now I'm hitting. I'm still, it's coming down, back down a little bit. So it's it's, get, it's getting close to centered. My uh, power hour number one. And my lunchtime number two is coming back a little bit. So again, I just. Uh, Easier to show you some of my so my working orders again. My first one here was the this is the uh, lunchtime number two, and the fill prices were similar, so that's why the profit target is similar on both. I have not been filled at twenty percent on either one of these yet, but before I enter anything else, something with one of these two has to happen. I need to get scaled out. Need to get stopped out, something. Keeps going up. My lunchtime number one will probably get stopped. I'm sorry, lunchtime number two. So looking at premium again, too, like it's just not... It's not looking great for entering a, a power hour number two unless we see a good push up here, which we could in the next 30 minutes. How we can see it in the next 10 minutes. Not usually, naughty dog. Um, the only way I would have three on maybe is if I had like an AM1 that maybe had one or two contracts left. But for the most part, it's two at a time. But you know, as you can... You, you can imagine if, if 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 I scale out at 20, 40, 60, and maybe I'm looking for an 80% and it's still in range, maybe it's still on, but maybe because of price movement, I've added another one and then that, later in the day, one more. So maybe I've got two on with one that's either close to getting stopped out or close to being full profit. But most of the time, yeah. Typically that will happen. Like you might get, might have one, a, your AM number one, AM number two, AM number one gets closed out. And then you start scaling out of AM number two and you put in lunchtime iron condors as price moves. You may get three on at once, but try not to do that too much because it's part of my risk management. And if price is not moving a lot, I mean, you shouldn't really need three on at once because you're you're having two on, and if the price isn't moving a lot, you should be scaling out of that of your two. I mean, I'm sitting pretty good with my power hour number one. It's almost dead center right now, believe it or not. But I have oh, just got filled five ten. So power hour number one, build 20%. Okay, so I go in here, and I again, this is so I can reflect at the end of the day. Um, and again, I want to track. So I've got minus 510 on five contracts. So I want to track over time how these are doing, because I didn't start tracking AM lunchtime p and power hour until january okay so 635 profit target now on my power hour number one 40 percent profit would be 475 so again Um, JJ, what time did you jump on? Um, so right here, do you see on my spreadsheet power hour number one, 150 central time? I'm always central. Yeah. 150 central. Okay, so my OCO. So I did 10 contracts. So I'm gonna create I'm gonna create an OCO, create duplicate order. I'm gonna get out of two more. 
at 40%, which is 4.75. Okay, so and this also helps me remember, so my fill was 510. Okay. So I'm going to keep it at four on my trailing stop. Changes okay because my profit target is still above four. Did I do the math wrong? You're right. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Okay. So 380. Okay. Glad you. Thanks, Wuga. So my trailing stop, I'm going to put it 380. So I'm lowering it a little. Okay. So that's the difference of the trailing stop between the AM and the lunchtime. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure I could maybe still do 75% uh, of my last fill. I'm sure I could do that. I mean... So my new trailing stop is, so I got filled it, uh, or my next target is 380, okay? So like Wuga said, so instead of taking 75% of 510, which was my last fill, I'm just I'm just putting it at what my next, um, what is that, would be 100% of my next, my next target, profit target would be 380. So I'm, I'm starting at four, I'm just lowering it to 380. The next time I would lower it again. And the reason that I do that is because power hour, I could just move things move quicker, right? See, that's why I like it's I tell people to paper trade what I'm doing because it's those little intricacies that you get through practice of paper trading. You don't get it. It's I just don't I, doing real money to me would be trying to do all the little intricacies like I'm like I do. You just confuse yourself and you don't want to be confused when you're trading real money. At least I don't. Like I wanted I wanted to be able to put these orders in blindfolded if I had to. Like it was just banging right off, you know. So I take off half. So yeah, see, th these are the types of questions that'll all be in my presentation. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get get that out later this week if I could get some good examples. It's hard to lead a live stream and pull the examples into a presentation. <laughs> so I was able to do the two examples I did today with uh, lunchtime, but I'm not going to be able to do it. Power hours too quick. <laughs> no, talk. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that either. But so it's just a slow grind up for right now. And when you look at premium, I mean, man, even if I was to enter, I, I don't know that I would enter one, even if I didn't have two on right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think what people need to see is they need to see the initial presentation. And then, you know, Steve and I are going to start co-hosting Power Hour when he gets back. That way, by that time, you will have seen the presentation. Hopefully, you've done some paper trading of the AM and lunchtime. And then Power Hour, I can answer any questions. And also for me, like, it's it's hard to for me to type answers in Discord when I'm not. It's easy for me to easier for me to answer questions when I'm live like this, but when I'm trying to put on OCOs and put on trades because price has moved and then type in the Discord like it's just too much. I can't. And so I told Steve like maybe if we co-host it, you no. Know, um, if people had a question on what I'm doing, they could I could just verbally say it to them instead of having to type it. And so how many, I mean, how many tranches, I guess, just depends. 
The, yeah, the presentation will cover AM iron condors. So like, and again, that my 930 to 1130 central. And it'll cover my lunchtime iron condors, which are 1130 to roughly 130 central. And then power hour, which is roughly 130 to 245. Yeah, I've got 90% of it done. I'm just trying to put in some examples. But I can't pull examples when I'm live streaming. And again, like if you're, if you're paper trading then, like which was my approach and what I recommend, then you're going to, I just think you're going to be, when you actually start trading real money, you're going to be so much more unconfused. It's like with anything, when you try something new, you get better at it by practicing. We're talking practice. That's what I'm talking about, practice. But it's true for trading. So right now, like my p l is doing a lot better. I'm in the green because these these last two trades I have on right now are just I love that though. I love Allen Iverson. We're talking about practice, man. Not a game. Well, in trading, trading is different. You really should practice. So the power hour stops, I just put tighter wings. So instead of 50 points wide, I'm doing like 30. Green, does that make sense? Yeah, so what, what uh, trade do you want to see, Kelvin? My power hour one? Okay, so they haven't changed much from already showing you, but I'll show you again. So here's my here's my um, lunchtime number two. It's just hanging out up there. And I've closed half of my power hour. And I don't have the break even sitting where they're supposed to be, but but you can see. That's where my power hour is sitting. So sitting good. So I'm not going to really put anything new on until that gets off center. Okay, so let me get back to some questions here. The ones you have on right now. Okay, got that. Not the wings, the stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cream, it starts at $4. Yep. Yeah, and so I tighten that number by, by okay, so my... I got filled at half. Of course, I got a good premium. I usually don't get premium at 630 in power hour, but I did. So my so 380 was my next stop. So my was my next profit target, 40%. And so my trailing stop was 380. Okay, so if I if I get filled at 40% at 380, my 60 would be 60% would be 255. So my next trailing stop would be 255. Yeah, probably something like that. 
uh, Michael. I like it's just, if it's above five bucks, and I'll do a straddle. Yeah, I will. I've done straddles. If I do a straddle, I'm probably getting out of it before market closes. But my target premium is always five bucks or higher. You know, not much action for me in Power Hour today because um, my Power Hour trade is the one I put on is still sitting center. I mean, you can kind of see Power Hour. So I started Power Hour about right here. There just hasn't been any movement. <laughs> I try to simplify things. I really do. Like, that's why I get like over the weekend and stuff. Everybody's like, just, I'm like, just chill, just chill, man. It's all right. We don't got to be all technical with all this. Let's make it simple. Like, I get it. You want to see that nice, pretty back test, but I want to see that nice, pretty profit. <laughs> you know, t here's the thing, guys. Look, okay, so just listen to me for a second. Today is not a, really an ideal day to be trading this way. Honestly, look at, I mean, look at this price movement. So when it, okay, so here's my two initial pushes that I wait on, right? So I entered my first one like up here. Like this isn't really that good. You don't really want it to look like that. But I'm currently setting up twelve hundred dollars. So just think about what happens if things become more volatile. Well, you know, right now, when we're talking about the VIX, I mean it's at back under 14, but what happens when it gets up to back up to 19? Okay. Well, does that hurt or does that help me? Well, that's gonna help me. Because I'm going to be have I'm going to have wider iron condors now. So, so to me, it's like over the last like couple months with premium being so so small, and I'm still making profits with doing it this way. I could only think that this is going to get better as things get more volatile. Yeah, Chris. So, I mean, my first trade entry. If you look at if you look at pro, uh, my chart here, I mean, you can look at your chart back about nine thirty central. I mean, it had a push down, then a push up. So that's kind of my two pushes I look for. Sometimes it's a push down, a little bounce, and then another push down. It just depends. But I've just noticed when I wait till after nine o'clock central, I'm typically seeing two pushes somewhere. So I just enter one at over five bucks in premium. Okay, well, yeah, that's the Dow. Let me go to it's the same. It looks the same though. Let me go. Okay. Here we go. Same thing. Push down, push up. Okay, so right there is where I entered. Okay. Now it had this little funky down up, which isn't always that was the Fed speaker, right? So typically, you know, it comes down. Oh, it's off center. I'm gonna enter number two. So it's it's just based on where price is in your current trades you have on <laughs> it's okay to have controversy but i'm just like i just trying to keep it simple man okay so i mean the sbx just hasn't moved anywhere in the last 30 minutes Yeah, so it, it, if there is a move down, so and see, this is the type of examples I want to put in my presentation to make them make sense, which means they have to be real life. So I just got filled at, what was that, fill? Okay, 375. So power hour number one just hit 40%. Okay, so 
let's let's, let's have a quiz here. Okay. So I've gotten out of 20 and I've gotten out of 40%. So I have three contracts left. Okay. So who wants to tell me what my 40% profit targets or my 60% profit target is going to be? Yeah. So 60% is next. So let me, I want to keep track here. So I got out of two more contracts. At 375 is my fill. Okay, I just got filled again. So did I get stopped out? Okay, so my lunch time, so my lunch time, I see number two got filled at minus five bucks. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not minus five bucks. We got filled at five dollar, stopped at five bucks. Okay, so here's my lunchtime number two. So I never, I didn't get out of anything on that, did I? Oh, I had to get out of 20%. This is where it gets a little confusing when you've had multiple positions on. Okay, so let's do, I need to get an order in on my power hour. Okay, so t Krish, 635. Yes, 255. So, so I go in and do an OCO for 255, and then that 255 is my trailing stop. So I'm going to go ahead and scale out. Because it's sitting pretty centered right now, I'm just going to scale out a one more instead of two. I got three left. But it's sitting pretty centered. So I'm just going to get out of one contract at 255. My trailing stop is going to be 255. Okay, so now I've got one trade on, that's it. Well, if you don't know how to put on a trailing stop, Kelvin, then I would go to the I would go to the um, course because that's all I'm doing is putting on an OCO. If you don't know how to do that, for me, the best thing for you to see is the price movement. And so I just come in here expecting that you a know how to do a, an iron condor and b know how to do a trailing stop. Uh, OCO order. Because if you know how to do that, then that's, again, to me, that's where the practice comes in because I wanted to be able to do all that with my eyes closed. So if you master the OCO order, how to put it in, then you just have to w figure out what the calculations are. And so here, here, here you go, uh, Kelvin. So you can see my price. I'm closing one contract. This is what I was doing as I was talking. 255. And my trailing stop is 255. So I've always done it. I've always done it as I go along, but tr Steve did give me some templates or he gave me a video on how to do it. I just, before I start doing that with real money, I'm going to, I want to do that. I want to do practice with that, with those templates. Yeah, exactly. Um, Wooga. Yep. It's right at 35 minutes.
And so those are just little things. The reason I recommend the paper trading is you can put in those OCO orders so much quicker with practice. Okay, so I got one. I got one. I have, I have one trade on right now. Okay, so I'm looking at power hour number two. Okay, but as I look at premiums, it's just not there. And also, my power hour one is sitting almost dead center. So I'm just not doing. So let's go back to Chris's question: like, how many power hour tranches do you do? Well, I mean, it just depends. The way price is moving like this, like not very many when it doesn't move. Meech, if you are looking to reduce the number of times you have to adjust your stop, you could use the percent trailing stop. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind putting them in, you know, um, because typically power hour sometimes does go fast where you're having to put them in um, you know, several in a short period of time, but the, the AM and the lunchtime, man, they, they just, they don't, they're not quick trades. And so you're not like having to rush to put them in, you know, so, but like I said, power hour, you can like, yeah, I mean, if price is really moving, like, oop, you know, filled 20%, uh, then got stopped, got to put in another one. I mean, you know, it can be, a little more hectic power hour, but it's not today because of price isn't moving much. And, I, and I'm all for putting in another power hour trade, but I mean, when you look at like, you know, this is, what am I? This is uh trade number, what am I in, five trades? So, I mean, I, I typically do six. I mean, so... I'm I'm kind of sitting right there where I normally am with number of trades. Um, I do have to go back and look. So I did get that trailing stop when I was talking. Oh, I know what I got out of. <laughs> <laughs> so that was you trying to do too many things at once, guys. So I got out of... I thought I got stopped out. I think I closed half of my other one. So that was the lunchtime number two. It is much more difficult to talk figure all this out. Okay. So good news, guys. Good news, good news, good news. Good news, good news. So here is my, what I thought was my lunchtime number two that got stopped. Well, guess what happened? I actually got out of half. See where it's at? So it held on. So those two fills came both about the same time. I thought one was getting stopped and one got out of half. So I got out of half here at $5. So now I need to make a new OCO for that one. Okay, so if you can see there, my lunchtime iron condor number two got filled at 20. So 40%, okay, would be 385 would be my target. So I'm going to do my OCO. And remember, this is the lunchtime one. So I'm just going to keep using this 0.75%. Because it's getting close, I'm going to get out of half 
of what I have left. So I had eight contracts, my original. I got out of four. I'm going to get out of two more. At 385, it's already at 375. Nice. Okay, see, it's coming down. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll just go 3.5. Okay, so filled at 370, but I made a mistake and I didn't adjust my contracts. So I said I was going to get out of two. What happened was is I closed all four because I'm an idiot. That's what happens when you're talking and there's so many fine details. Okay, so this, unfortunately, this trade right here, lunchtime number two, Ah, uh, well, I mean, you can't be upset with the winner, right? 1640, but I could have probably been scaling out better. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So my so my lunchtime number two got out of half, almost got stopped out, came back into range and got out of 40. I'd probably be getting out of 60% here shortly, too. That's the power of doing this process. If I would remember to take those, I said I was going to get out of two because I had four left and I never adjusted. So I wonder if any of my lunchtime numbers, sometimes I check when I'm all closed out, what my longs are like. You know, I'll close them if I can. So in, in terms of power hour trades, like I'm not going to take any more. The premium's not there. Uh, both my call and put side. Um, again, maybe this will help some of you too. It's just easier for me to clip it and pull it over here. Oops. So you can kind of see here. Um, so here's where my calls and puts are at. So just the premium's not there. It's just not for, so I'm not putting in anymore. I know sometimes Steve enters them at around this time is his third one, maybe. I'm just not going to overlap stripes, stripe, uh, strikes, and the premium's not there. <clears throat> so just going to wait and try to take profits from this my one power hour trade that I've got left. And uh, I'm going to see if these lunchtime number two, if my wings are worth anything, they're probably not. So it would be the, go back to, yeah, see price really hasn't moved, so I doubt they are. But from, but for me, it would be let's take a look. And I do, you know, I do eight contracts typically at lunch, so I can distinguish which one belongs to which. At like my power hour, I did 10. So I can quickly okay, those you know, those calls aren't worth anything. Usually by this time, they're not worth much. Unless you've had some big, yeah, they're not worth anything. So, so I've got a 1640 winner now to throw in with my, that's my lunch time. So, So my lunchtime one was 1310 and then 1640. Maybe yuck. I like that green right there. And I've got one trade left on. So 
So not a real active power hour for me today. That's again, that's just all based on price movement. Dug myself a hole, dug myself out. I hope so. I mean, I think it'll make more sense. So I've got this on my, he pulled it, I've got this on my one next to me, but so you can kind of look at the screen here as price isn't doing much. <clears throat> so, it, you know, I want to, I want to give you like, you kind of know the, the backstory of it, but um, again, this is like prerequisites, right? You got to, you got to do these courses. You got to know how to trade an OCO. Um, you know, yeah, I'm going to assume you know how to trade an iron condor. I'm going to assume you know how to place the OCO. So, um, my risk management, you know, a lot of it is choosing the number of contracts. I start with about six, you know, last year at this time, my count wasn't as big. Probably would have started with two or four, but I start now with six in the AM and then as the day goes on, it gets better. It's not as expensive for buying power and it goes to uh, eight contracts and then usually power hours 10. But but I give you, I give you the times, you know, when I'm putting all these on. Yeah, thanks, Wooga. There you go. See, if you to me, if, if someone does this for a month, give it a month. If you can be pulling profits like this because you start to understand the intricacies of price movement and um, how to add a new one when one side gets tested. I mean, all I'm really doing is taking advantage of theta decay with price movement. Um, but, you know, I, I give you how I scale out in here. You know, like if I have 10, I typically... You know, it, Five two two one three one one one. I mean eight. And that's what I do, and sometimes I change it. So, um, and then I just and I walk you through, and then I want to I want to put in some examples and stuff. So, hopefully that is, I can do that this week. I did, I did the lunchtime ones today. You can kind of see. Yeah, I don't want to confuse you. I'm still I'm not done with it yet. So, yeah, that's what I need to do. I just need to with with two contracts. Yeah, I would probably just do one and one at twenty and forty. Go to my Orion. Sometimes I pull up. I like looking at the futures in my Orion when I'm doing all this. To me, sometimes this. Helps me better than um, toss. I mean, you can, you know, it's whatever, whatever your eyes prefer. I'm so used to looking at Orion with uh, leading the live stream. Sometimes I just like look at this futures and you can kind of see like power hour. It's almost, I'm almost disappointed. I didn't have a second power hour trade on. I mean, it's would have been probably really good. And so, again, going back to my one that I do have on, it's quicker for me to just do this, but you can see it's, man, it's sitting almost dead center. Okay, so could somebody answer that for Krish? It's a good question. Good question. But I want to see if some people have been Want to know? There you go, Ken. I'm not putting on a number two when it's my number one is centered. Right, Meech. Exactly. Like I could have, but I would have overlapped strikes. Yeah, I just never, I never got, I never got tested to the my first power hour trade. That's to me is the big difference of the back test and the way y'all do it, where you got a certain time you're going in no matter what. 
right? Like that's the difference between what I'm doing here and what y'all are doing with the, the other, you know, things that Steve has been doing. Here I made my strikes look, look a little bit better. So you see where it's currently at right at this moment. Like I'm just not, it, it's, it's been between right here this entire time. To be honest with you, that doesn't really happen in power hour very often. Like typically it tests one side during power hour. Right, exactly, Mauro. Exactly. So, and keep in mind, I had a second one on. I, I should still have that lunchtime number two on. Remember, I, I, I screwed up. I should. Right, exactly. See, now we're starting to get the things that I've said before. We're starting to see them in action now. But if you look at my lunchtime number two here, remember I got out, I was going to get out of two at 370. So, so here's another, here's another reason, Chris. I would still have two on. Maybe I'd even had cut one of them by now at even lower price at, at eight, at 60% um, profit. If I wouldn't have closed this one out like an idiot, I just forgot to adjust two strikes or two, two contracts. Okay. So normally I would have two on right now. I'd be finishing up with, I'd probably be booking 60% profit on my lunchtime too, maybe even 80% the way this price is moving. And I'm currently sitting here with a fill price at 255 for 60% of my power hour number two. And because it's setting so centered, I probably could lower that to not take it off. But I'll stick with my plan. And this is exactly what I like seeing during power hour, that's for sure. Okay, so I just got filled at 255. Okay, so I go in here. Okay, so I closed one contract. Of my power hour number one. Okay, so that was 20, 40, 60. So who knows what the 80% profit is? I have I have two of ten left. If you're booking eighty percent profit in power hour, that's great. If I can get it. Okay. So price is six thirty five is what I got filled on this power hour. So who wants to tell me what eighty percent would be? Because I'm gonna do my OCO. <laughs> yeah, anyone? Hey, I'm a I was a teacher and principal for 21 years. Yes, 1.3. So I'm gonna put my price in at 1.3 or 1.25, whatever. Yeah, let's put it at 1.25, man. I mean it's sitting centered. Hell, let's just put it at 1.20. And uh, you know what? Um I'm just gonna go ahead and put my trailing stop at 1.5. That's fine. I don't want to go any lower than that. So I'm going to close one more contract at 1.2 with a trailing stop of 1.5. See, now when you're getting down into the 80% and these trailing stops are like in the ones, you pretty much just put whatever you want. Yeah, I could close both contracts here at 80% if I wanted to. It's sitting pretty centered. Just win, baby. Just win. Okay, so you <laughs> look at price on my look at this power hour from one forty five. 
<clears throat> man. So I'm currently at over 3K. Okay, but tell me this, guys. Is it only going to get easier to put profits in these as volatility gets higher? Or is it going to get harder? I think the I, I think the benefit of it would be you're having wider, especially the mornings and lunchtime, you're having wider spreads. Okay. So so here's how my one power hour trade is setting. So, I mean, I, I'm i laughing because, like, this typically isn't how Power Hour goes. So, man, I mean, part of me is just like, maybe I should just let it expire and just take my... Maybe I should just, yeah, I should just take my order off. Problem is, is like the last five minutes, it could just rip one way or the other. So I like to keep that trailing stop on. Right now, my trailing stop is 355. So, I mean, worst case scenario here with two contracts left, if I get stopped out there, I'm still going to be up 2750 for the day. That's worst case scenario. Losing bid. What do you mean by losing bid? I'm not sure what you're meaning by that, Meech. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I have experienced that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's why, like, if I'm in a straddle, I'm closing it out. And so, like, yeah, I, I hope I would hit my 355 or whatever I said it was instead of getting missed, but... All right, 1390 today, Meech? No, wait, no, no, that's Donnie Dog. Does does Tasty Trade uh does Tasty Trade have paper trading now? Oh, well then what's this Tasty Trade? I thought this is a uh... That night, I thought you screenshotted your tasty trade. Oh, I got you. Oh, so your thirteen, what you posted wasn't my, wasn't these the iron condors. Still, look at this power hour price movement. Oh, that was okay. So you so you're so that is the that is the uh think or swim profit. I got you. I'm with you. Well, there you go. You're not on the struggle bus, man. Look at that. You plus 1390 today. Yeah, so here see here comes price movement in the last 10 minutes. It, Hope I don't get 
Oh, but if it stops out, it stops out. So if not, maybe I'll book 80%. Paper trade. Look at these guys with paper trading. I love it. Booyah. 2000 bucks. Some of you experienced power hour traders are going to have to make a little bit of a switch from time to time here now. I know you got reputations to uphold, but nobody's going to laugh at you for paper trading, some of you. <laughs> Man, this price movement is just, I haven't seen this in a while for Power Hour. Today was ah, not hot, not, e not easy at all. Oops. I, uh, do you share your spreadsheet? Van, Van Wooten, I can definitely share the spreadsheet. Um, yeah, yeah, blank one. Yeah. Um, shoot me an email at chat at navigationtrading.com to remind me, and I can post it in here somewhere. Um, also use the Discord chat. I don't and I'll check the um I don't check the Zoom chat, but it's yeah, you know, chat at navigationtrading.com. If you can remind me, I'll make a template. Um uh, I'm assuming which one are you talking about? Are you talking about my fills? Or are you talking about my overall progress? My overall progress, as you see, still... And I know you guys can do all this through all your... Like, Steve does this so much better with uh, all his platforms he uses. But this is how I... This is, this is how I like to do it. But I've got an annual, and then I've got a... I want to track the my AM lunchtime and power hours, so... I'm doing it this way. So if you want the, the, the trade price tracker tracker that's already got the formulas in it, or do you want the overall spreadsheet, just email me, chat at navigationtrading.com, and I'll, let me know which one it is. I'll try to post. I can put blank ones in there when I make them blank at some point. Looks like price is moving up, which doesn't bode well, but my stop is lowered. So my trailing stop is now come lowered, it may get stopped out here. You can kind of see how price has moved up. Five minutes to go. Normally I'm out of it by now. Yeah, Van Wooten, just make sure you post in the uh discord chat not the zoom chat i won't i won't see those anymore come on come back down both sheets yeah i can i can make blank ones of both sheets for me it's helped me with all my fills and keep track of which fills go with which and I also, I didn't do it today, but I also like to type the strikes in here for my trade notes. It helps me monitor the time. I don't know if that can, what Steve does can monitor the time and all that like it does here, but it's what worked for me when I was paper trading, so I've just continued it. So, man, this last one, I need it to come down a little bit, but it looks like it might stop me out. Or I, or I'll, or I won't get filled because, like Meech said, nobody there to buy it. It never came down to a buck 20 and got me at 80%, though. 
unfortunately. So when I look at it, one, two, three, four. So I did have six trades today. So that's my normal. I just took an extra morning one based on price. Yeah. As you can kind of see all of last week, six, six, four, five, and three. But three I had a, on Friday I had a doctor appointment. Yeah, my uh I got I got skipped, looks like Meech. It, it it passed my stop, so that is definitely happening to me right now. Well, it's happening to me because I'm not getting filled. My my stop was at three, was it two seventy five and it's up to four dollars and I'm not filled. So maybe it's paying me back from this morning. So Dow ending up down 250, NASDAQ down five, S&P down 19. So really the S&P pretty much ended where it started today. Yeah, see, I, I'm not getting my fill on my last one. I should have probably closed it out. So this is a mistake on my part. At a boy, and a boy, Michael. I'm losing money as we speak because of this stupid thing going up, and I never got stopped out. I'm still gonna be green, but this is dumb. Like my limit was 275, and it's at 492. Dumb. You kidding me? Okay, so I'm gonna show you this. This this is stuff you learn along the way. But look at this garbage. So this tells me this hasn't happened a lot to me. But look, I had a 275 stop and it ended at 583. So next time, Chad, go ahead and just close it out with 10 minutes to go and take your profits. I mean, I just have I just have them on my shorts. Yeah, exactly. So I should have just probably closed them out. That kind of evens out from this morning, right? Okay, this is hold on a second here now. Hold on, I want to see. 8.5K? What, what, what are you trading there, Elliot? Tons of contracts. Okay, so my last two got filled, closed out at 573. So sixteen forty nine. So not the best day, but twenty three fourteen for me on six trades. So. All right, I guess I got one power hour under my under my belt. I hope some of that was helpful. Um, and I will see everybody back. Let's see the tomorrow. Let's take a look at this real quick. I've got I can't do power hour tomorrow because I got a meeting. Let me take a look at the live stream. I know.
straight changed it up here a little bit. So I got a meeting at with my 13 year old and a potentially new school he's going to for high school next year. He's a really good football player. So we have that at three central tomorrow. So I will be live market open. And then I'll post my AM and lunchtime iron condors, but no power hour for me tomorrow. And then Thursday, Friday, I'll do mornings and power hour. So see you, buddy, then. Catch you later. Peace.